Hello and welcome to another episode of Podcast DX, the show that brings you interviews with people just like you whose lives were forever changed by a medical diagnosis. I'm Lita. I'm Ron. <laughs> and that's our refrigerator. <laughs> Hello, refrigerator. <laughs> You don't know why it does that. I am Jean Marie. <laughs> we do have a refrigerator that beeps. If anyone has any advice, we're more than happy to take it. Because <laughs> we've had everything. Everyone's been out. We have no idea. You're right. Collectively, we're the host of Podcast DX. Even the refrigerator? Yes, even the refrigerator. <laughs> On today's show, we're talking about hernias. Uh, we're referring to information garnered from the Cleveland Clinic's website throughout this show. Right. According to the Cleveland Clinic, a hernia occurs when an internal organ or other body part protrudes through the wall of muscle or tissue that normally contains it. Uh, so picture... Your uh, intestines. No, I was thinking picture tight clothing. Oh. And uh, it, it's so tight that some body parts well, okay. might you're wearing like tight jeans yeah in a tight top and right. you might end up with that little bubble right a little bubble in between the two yeah, the little donuts so yeah where the uh the body part comes through it's a very odd analogy <laughs> i know but it's kind of hard to picture a muscle anyway most hernias occur within the abdominal cavity between the chest and the hips and today we're going to talk about some of or a few of the most common hernias and I, I think at this table we have most of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we've been known to have hernias. Mm -hmm. um, the most common forms of hernias that we're going to talk about today are um, an inguinal hernia, which in men, the inguinal canal is a passageway for the spermatic cord and blood vessels that lead to the testicles. And in women, the inguinal canal contains the round ligament that gives support for the womb. In an inguinal hernia, the fatty tissue or part of the intestine pokes into the groin at the top of the inner thigh. Uh, and this is the most common type of hernia and affects men more than women. Mm -hmm. Right. And a femoral hernia, where fatty tissue or a part of the intestine protrudes into the groin at the top of the inner thigh. Femoral hernias are much less common than inguinal hernias and mainly affect older women. Okay. There's Something to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's also an umbilical hernia, which is fatty tissue or part of the intestine that pushes through the abdomen near the navel, which is your belly button, of course. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a hiatal or hiatus hernia, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that is where part of the stomach pushes up into the chest cavity through an opening in the diaphragm, which is the horizontal sheet of muscle that separates the chest from the abdomen. And that one's very painful. Yes. I can attest to that. Um, there are a few less common hernias, including um, incisional hernias, where the tissue per ends up protruding through the site of an abdominal scar from a um, abdominal or pelvic operation, per se. Um, there's epigastric epigastric hernias where fatty tissue is popping through the abdomen or the abdominal area between um, the navel and the lower part of the sternum or breastbone. I had one of those. Oh, there we go. And there's um, Spigelian. Spigelian. S-P-I-G-E-L-I-A-N. Spigelian. I'm going I'm with Spigelian. Okay, Spigelian. An unusually <laughs> pronounced by our crew um, hernia, where the intestine actually ends up pushing through the abdomen at the side of the abdominal muscle, just below um, or below the navel. I've had one of those. Oh, wow! I can't wait till we get to to um, this part where we talk about hernia prevention <laughs> with Lita. Um, there's <laughs> diaphragmatic hernias, and organs of the abdomen end up moving into the chest through an opening in the diaphragm. Also, it's really painful. Not that any of the other ones aren't painful, but pretty damn painful. Yeah. And how common are hernias, Ron? Well, Apparently, they're happening all the time at this table. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, that's one, uh, that's one group I don't want to be a part of. Uh -huh. But of all the hernias that occur, 75 to 80% are inguinal or femoral. Only 2% of hernias are incisional or ventral. Uh, three to ten percent of hernias uh, 
are umbilical and they affect 10 to 20 percent of newborns right uh most close by themselves by five years of age however okay and then there's an indiscriminate one to three percent of other types of hernias no I, at least i'm rare mm. Mm. <laughs> the only rare i want is my steak <laughs> yeah yeah Inguinal and femoral hernias are often due to weakened muscles. Uh Uh-oh. So that might be a problem, Mom. Uh Um, uh, Or it might be just present since birth. Um, They're typically, uh, you will hear about them when, as you age, they occur more often. And if you are constantly straining um, in the abdomen or groinal area. So I know I've heard people lift a heavy load and then they, they, next thing you know, they have a hernia. Um, Such strain uh, can come from physical exertion, obesity, pregnancy, um, frequent coughing. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, yeah, no wonder why you're just out of luck, Mom. (laughs) Uh, Or straining on the toilet due to constipation. Constipation. So yet another reason to eat your fiber. Vegetables, yes. Yep, get your 35 grams a day. Yep. And adults may get... And drink water, sorry. And drink water. Adults may get an umbilical hernia by straining the abdominal area, being overweight, having a long-lasting heavy cough, or after giving birth. Sorry. You didn't do it. Oh, okay. I blame it all on my sister. No, I blame it all on, on diesel starters, which are about 45 pounds, and when you bend over an engine oh, it's to an, put yeah, them it's on, an uncomfortable position it's a bad be. position yeah, to hold it. Yeah, you need a... Um, a hoist to hold hoist, it up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just let me know when you guys are done. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. No, Your no turn. <laughs> The cause of uh, hiatal hernias, however, is not fully understood, but a weakening of the diaphragm with age or pressure on the abdomen is suspected to play a part. Yep. If you end up injuring your C-spine and having a brain herniation, you know, the next thing you know, you could have several and they're not fun. Um, a hernia in the abdomen or groin can produce notice- a noticeable lump or bulge. Um, and that you could be pushed back in. I don't know if I'd be pushing that back in. Oh, yeah, you got to push it back in. Otherwise, it hurts like a son of a gun. Oh. You got to push it in. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think gosh. it'll hurt if you push it back in. No, 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 no. Trust me. It won't hurt it's to push kinda, it back in? No, no, no. I've had them. And it's kind of like a charley horse. When you have a charley horse, you want to rub it, right? Mm-hmm. Or yeah. walk on it, right? Yeah. And if you don't, it yeah. hurts and it yeah. hurts and it hurts. But so, any bulges or lumps or bumps, make sure you see a healthcare provider well yeah but in the meantime if it feels better to push it in push it in okay but if something if you ever get hurt and stuff comes out don't don't put it back in <laughs> yeah please know like, what we're going to say at the end of the show to yeah, um yeah. consult your well because like if you have provider. an open abdominal wound well that's different or like a brain injury i'm not you, saying that to push stuff back no in. i'm talking okay. about if it's a if it's a closed if it's just your abdomen and all of a sudden you got just this a little, little bump, a little it could bump, be an alien. And alien. then call your doctor. Mm-hmm. And then call your doctor. Um, and apparently laughing, crying, coughing. Oh, or... wait, wait. But put a magic marker mark on it. Oh, yeah. So it'll be easier to find. Right. Yeah. yeah. Permanent. Oh. Not magic. Permanent marker. A right? permanent marker. Yeah. Yeah. Put a little X on it because yep. once you push it in, the doctor might not know where it is. Oh, okay. Isn't that's, that weird, though? That's yeah. good advice, though. Yeah. Well, it's better oh, yeah. than just wandering yes, around inside your abdomen looking for a weak spot. Laughing, crying, <laughs> straining during a bowel movement, physical activity, co- did I mention coughing, mm-hmm. can make the lump reappear. So it's like magic. Oh. Magic. You want to see a magic trick? Yeah. Um, after it's already been pushed in. And there are some other symptoms for a hernia, and these may include um, increased pain at the site of the bulge, um, pain when you're exerting yourself, such as like lifting heavy weight or something. Um, swelling or a bulge at in the groin or the scrotum, and the scrotum is the pouch that contains the testes. In case, just FYI. Um, also, a dull aching sensation. Um, the bulge might in, increase in size over time. This sounds like a horror story waiting to be told. Um, <laughs> a sense of uh, feeling full or signs of a bowel obstruction. So, um, you know, if you're not going like you normally would, there might be an issue. Or if you're full and you haven't been eating. And a lot of this sounds like my mother oh. right now. So, yep. Um, in the case of hiatal hernias, um, and there are, when there are no bulges on the outside or, you know, like noticeable or visualized bulges, mm-hmm. um, instead the symptoms might include like heartburn, mm-hmm. indigestion, mm-hmm. difficulty swallowing, mm-hmm. frequent regurgitation, mm-hmm. chest pain. Yep. And I, I think in my mother's case, belching. Belching, much belching, yes. But yep. we're going to be seeing a gastro doctor soon to take Yay. check that out. Uh, and you were talking about um, <clears throat> increase of bulging over time. So 
the reason we thought of doing this episode is because my husband had a problem recently and he said, um, you know, my stomach just doesn't feel right. And I said, okay. So the next day he calls back and says, my stomach still doesn't feel right. And I said, have you pooped? Because that's the first thing I think about. Somebody constipated. He said, no, not really. And I said, all right. <laughs> Look at Gene's face <laughs> while you're talking. <laughs> I said, take, some, take something to, to get things moving and you'll probably feel better tomorrow. Okay, so he took something. The next day he calls back. Still not better. Take me to the emergency room. I said, all right. So I took him to the emergency room and we're waiting for the doctor. And the doctor comes in and says, I understand you have an upset stomach. And I said, yeah, but he hasn't pooped. And the doctor said, okay, where does it hurt? And he's pushing on his abdomen by his navel. And he said, does it hurt here? And he said, yeah. He said, okay, well, we're going to do uh, some tests. They did a blood test and then they did a... I want to say an x-ray. It was just an x-ray. Yes. And um, about two hours later, another doctor walks in. This doctor looked a little older, a little bit more um, knowledgeable, just by the way she carried herself. Seasoned? Seasoned. Yes, seasoned. Yes. Oh, you guys are ages. <laughs> and she said, uh, my resident said that uh, when he did your exam, he didn't really do a thorough exam. Could you please stand up, Mr. Thomas? So he stands up and he turns around, offering her his backside. And I said, no, Tony, turn back around because now I'm realizing what's going on. So he turns back around and faces her and she takes a look and says, oh my God, how long has this been like this? And I naturally had to look. And I said, oh my God, how long has this been like this? Here's For our listeners, I'm just going to jump I, in real I, quick. I, well, For our I'm listeners, gonna... Lita can't see Jean, but no. the way I'm situated, <laughs> I can see Jean and she's got her hands <laughs> she's probably covering her face. Over okay, there. but... But also for our listeners, yes. the next couple of statements are probably not appropriate for all listeners. Um, <laughs> if you're a male, the next couple of statements are very important. But also just be prepared. Brace yourself. If you're driving, you might want to pull over. <laughs> um, if you have children in the car, oh, you might want to wait till later. So, okay. So the problem was his right testicle was hanging about as low as his knee. And I looked and I said, number one, how do you walk like that? Number two, how did you let it get that bad without seeing a doctor? And number three, how do you get your pants on? That's why, why I meant their kilt was invented. Oh, so he said, I thought it was a part of old age that things sag. And I said, well... What happened to the other testicle then? That would have been my question. Yeah. And he said, um, I guess this one was older. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. I, and I guess a lot of... So the um, problem was... A lot of stuff does case, have to do with symmetry. In case you're you wondering... If you symmetry, there might be an issue. Yes. In case you're wondering... Nope. <laughs> he had a hernia. <laughs> and his hernia involved his bladder. That was the portion of the body that extended through the weak muscle in the testicle and the bladder picture the bladder men ended up in his testicle by his knee by his knee hey, well because it was big it was full of urine but he was wasn't having a problem peeing oh yeah he didn't mention that he okay. he, he failed to mention that during the exam okay. okay i'm in pain just listening to this well this is something i said okay well we've got to do an episode because men you need to check to make sure that you don't have any hernias in that area. But also if you if you notice any lumps, bumps, asymmetry, discoloration, or anything, pain, pain anything see unusual. Your doctor. Yeah, go see a healthcare provider because the sooner it's treated, the sooner you can be on the road to recovery, the sooner they can catch cases of cancer and And the sooner they can keep the bladder out of the testicle. Yeah. Because the doctor had never seen anything that bad. It's actually, it's only written up in medical journals once. And he had to have major surgery. He had to be in the hospital for an entire week. Wasn't and, he in twice? Well, that was for the second hernia. Because oh. then he said, oh, you know what? This also, also there's, <laughs> there's this thing that looks like an arm poking out of my side. <laughs> 
So anyway, uh, yeah. So that's why I said we've got to do an episode because I don't know if men realize that they've got it. They've got to check. They're rewriting the medical books according to the Thomas family. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so just a quick question. Yeah. How is he doing now? How's Always his recovery? doing much better. I mean, it took him three weeks to recover from the first one. And then he recovered for two months. And then he went back and had the other side fixed. And the other side, they actually had to use a robotic surgeon because it was a re-hernia and he, the doctor said, without the robotics, he doesn't think he could have repaired it. So he's a mess. But wow. yeah, he's doing better. Well, that's wonderful. Um, so <laughs> for everybody, but for men in particular, please check this out. Um, so getting back to what we were talking about. Uh, I have no idea what we're talking <laughs> about. It is usually possible to see or feel a bulge in the area where a hernia has occurred just by a physical exam. Yeah, or watch. <laughs> Never mind. And as part of a male's typical physical exam for inguinal hernias, the doctor feels around the area that the testicles and groin are while the patient is asked to cough. I'm sure you've heard that before. Yep. Um, in some cases, what happens, a soft tissue imaging, it, like a CT scan, it will actually... Oh, maybe it was um, a CT scan that they had instead of an x-ray. Yeah, it must have been a okay. CT scan. Yeah, thanks. So uh, the CT scan will accurately diagnose the hernia. Right, right. I've had, yeah, I've had CT scans come back and they're like, by the way, you have a few yeah, hernias. Yeah. yeah. Well, hernias usually do not get better on their own, especially ones like my husband's. And surgery may be the only way to repair them. However, your doctor will recommend the best therapy to address your hernia and may refer you to a surgeon. If the surgeon thinks it's necessary to repair your hernia, then the surgeon will tailor the method of repair that best meets your needs. In the case of an umbilical hernia in a child, surgery may be recommended if the hernia is large or if it has not healed by the age of four to five years old. By this age, a child can usually avoid surgical complications. If an adult has an umbilical hernia, surgery is usually recommended because the condition will not likely improve on its own and the risk of complications is higher. There are several different procedures that can help uh, repair a hernia. As uh, my mom mentioned, uh, robotic hernia repair, which is um, like it's similar to laparoscopic surgery. And so it's um, small incisions, um, the surgeon is seated at a, um, a council in the operating room and they're playing like a video game and they can handle the surgical instruments from this console. And while robotic surgery can be used for some smaller hernias or weak areas, it can now also be used to actually reconstruct the abdominal wall, uh-huh. which is kind of amazing. It is. Um, then there's open surgery where there's actually an incision made at the location of the hernia. So that's one of the reasons my mom was saying, make sure you put the permanent markers so they're not you know, cutting all over. Mm-hmm. Um, and the protru- protruding tissue is then put back in place and the weakened muscle wall is stitched back together to hold it in place. Right. Um, sometimes uh, there's mesh used and that's implanted to help provide extra support in I've this got, area. I've got two meshes. Yep. 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 Yeah, you're practically, you know. A hot mesh? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then there's laparoscopic surgery, which um, is, once again, small incisions and, um, like, for example, in the ab- abdomen or the groin, and these teeny tiny little incisions are made to allow for surgical tools um, to complete the procedure, but you actually, you know, they're not larger incisions. And then um, it depends on your hernia and your healthcare team's um, plan um, to determine what surgery is best for you and there are certainly advantages and disadvantages to each and um you know you can talk through everything with your surgeon and find out what would help you the most well let me just say that other than umbilical hernia yeah and i was going to say ron tell us (laughs) what happens if you don't have a hernia repair i'm glad you asked yeah sorry it's a rough day it's all good it's all good (laughs) i've been traumatized (laughs) You've been traumatized. Okay. Okay, sorry. Go ahead, Rod. Other than umbilical hernias in babies that we talked about earlier, hernias will not disappear on their own. 
And over time, a hernia can grow larger and more painful and can actually develop complications. So again, if you see something early, please go see a doctor. Right. Um, and then complications from an untreated inguinal or femoral hernia may include an obstruction. Uh, and I could probably do a whole episode on that. But um, part of the intestine becomes stuck in the inguinal canal, causing nausea, vomiting, stomach pain, and a painful lump in the groin. Um, and also strangulation, which part of the intestine is trapped in a way that cuts off its blood supply. And in these cases, emergency surgery um, within hours of having this happen is necessary to prevent tissue death. Right, right. Because right. it can't get uh, blood supply. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And after surgery... It's like a tourniquet. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah, you don't want a tourniquet on any of your organs, organs or intestines. Yeah. Nope. Um, after your surgical procedure, you will need to follow your surgeon's um, instructions carefully. And it might include diet changes and certain you know diets to follow to help um, with the recovery, how to care for the incision site, um, how to avoid... Um, straining and re-injuring yourself and the hernia um it, it might reoccur it's unfortunate but the, they were not at that point where um it's a one and done type of thing um, often people will have a reoccurrence and have to go back in for another um, procedure uh, you also want to maintain your body weight um, within you know healthy limit uh, avoid smoking if you can because that um, anytime you're having a surgical procedure, smoking will um, increase your recovery time. And uh, mom, is there any way maybe to prevent hernias? Because apparently <laughs> we have a lot of them in our family. Well, uh, the way I could have prevented mine mm -hmm. was uh, lifting. Yeah, lifting without straining. Mm -hmm. uh, but they say, like you were saying, maintain an, I a, an ideal body weight. Mm -hmm eating a healthy diet and exercising. Okay. Eat enough fruits and vegetables and whole grains to avoid constipation, okay. which, you know, if you don't have constipation, then you're not straining. straining. Right. And if you're not straining mm -hmm. and pushing, you might not be pushing that part out. Mm -hmm. uh, use correct form when lifting weights or heavy objects. That's how I screwed mine up. And avoid lifting anything that is beyond your ability. Mm -hmm. Uh, see a doctor when you're ill with persistent coughs or sneezing. Don't smoke as the habit can lead to coughing that triggers a hernia. Well, there's another good reason to give up smoking. I, yeah. I don't smoke, but for people that do. Mm -hmm. So um, that, about covers that, all covers, the... that covers all the ways to avoid it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and thank you for joining us today. And I'm sorry if I grossed anybody yep. out. <laughs> but, you know, it just had to be said. Yep. Well, I hope this episode was Shall I say it lightning? Mm -hmm. Yes. For our listeners. It wasn't too much of a strain. <laughs> oh, not too much of a strain. Nice play on words, Gene. Yeah. All <sighs> right. If you have any questions or comments related to today's show, um, please contact us at podcastdx at yahoo.com, through our website, podcastdx.com, on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, or Instagram. And please don't send us any photos of your hernias, <laughs> especially if it's something that's around the knee area. Uh -huh. um, if you have a moment to spare, though, uh, give us a review wherever you get your podcast. And as always, please keep in mind that this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new healthcare regime. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking because of something you've heard in this podcast. Thank you.